Shiva obtained his primary and secondary education in Japan. Primary education in Victoria College, Chulipuram, and the secondary education in Japna Hindu College. His first degree is also from University of Japna. He graduated from University of Japna in 1994 with an honors degree in physics. Thereafter, he worked as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Physics, University of Japna, and lecturer of physicist in medical physics in, uh, in Faculty of Medicine and Teaching Hospital, University of Japna, for a few years. He obtained his first postgraduate degree. MSc in Medical Physics from University of Peradeniya in 1999. In 2004, he obtained uh, a postgraduate diploma in science from University of Canterbury, New Zealand with distinction in Medical Physics. He obtained his PhD in Medical Physics from the same university in 2007. Now he works as a lecturer in Medical Physics in the Department of Physical Science, Peter McCallum Cancer Institute. Melbourne, Australia, and at the same time, uh, as a research supervisor, senior lecturer in School of Medical Science, RMIT University, Melbourne, Australia. Before joining the RMIT University, he has worked in the capacity of a medical physicist, scientist, lecturer in many prestigious institutions in the world. Ottawa Hospital Cancer and Research Institute, Canada. University of Adelaide, Australia, Royal Adelaide Hospital, Australia, University of South Australia, and Auckland City Hospital, New Zealand, are few sub institutions. Dr. Siva has two international papers and many publications in peer reviewed international journals to his credit. He has served as visiting lecturer, consultant in radiotherapy, Faculty of Allied Health Science, University of Peradeniya. And most importantly, he serves as a visiting lecturer while MSc course conducted by the department. And we are very much thankful to him for doing this service to us. We are very pleased to have Dr. Siva here this afternoon to talk about the medical physics education and carry opportunities and challenges. Please give him a warm welcome. So, 
medical physics early days, you all know that uh, Ronchen discovered X-rays in 1895. So medical physics itself started in 1895. So you can see the radiograph uh, of the Ronchen's wife uh, in 1895. Still people uh, don't understand why he uh, obtained the radiograph from his wife instead of his own hand. So we don't know yet. But later, Ronchen's wife uh, passed away due to cancer. I don't know, because of <laughs> this radiation. <laughs> like. So what is medical physics? In short, medical physics deals with the application of physics principle, concept and theories uh, in, in diagnosis and treatment of diseases. Uh, it is a bridge between medicine and physics. So it deals with both ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. And it is an interdisciplinary subject, so it's not a pure physics, it is not a pure medicine. So it is a mixture of everything. Uh, so it deals with not only scientific but also clinical and technical aspects of medicine. So, so you have to prepare for, you know, to deal with technical and clinical aspects, not only the scientific. And high standard of education and training is required to be uh, to be a good physicist or medical physicist in this profession. Uh, so primarily, I am saying primarily, medical physics is divided into different areas. Uh, the major one is the radiation therapy physics or radiation oncology physics, uh, diagnostic radiology, immune medicine, radiation safety and health physics, radiobiology, and also non-ionizing radiation in medicine, for example, biomedical optics. So these all primarily divided, but there are many other areas of interest as well. Australia, the population of Australia is very similar to Sri Lankan population, uh, 21 million. So we have about 500 medical physicists uh, all over Australia and most of them, about 90% in radiation oncology and 10% in medical imaging, both nuclear medicine and diagnostic radiology. About 120 linear accelerators and 5 universities conduct medical physical education. So I am talking about medical physics education, but there are other medical radiation science program for radiation therapists and radiographers. Uh, but this is mainly for those uh, who are interested in medical physics. Um, then we have a professional college, Australian College of Physical Scientists and Engineers in Medicine. Uh, it's responsible for certification and accreditation of universities, hospitals, and the medical physics. So this is a recent graduate destination survey uh, conducted in New Zealand. So you can see the job sector breakdown for uh, initial employment of physics graduates. So roughly you can see here for health, the medical physics, roughly 7 out of 108. So you, you can think about the size of medical physics uh, in terms of the, the job uh, opportunities or the graduates who find jobs after graduation. So, so if you have any question, please ask. Uh, so you can see high school teaching is only seven out of 108, and about 24 for postdoctoral and academy, academia field, the academic field, and they can also in engineering, patent law. So physics can. Physicists can be employed in any, any, any areas. So that is the important point here. So this is a recent survey by the Institute of Physics UK. So about 2% of physics graduates uh, employed in the health sector. And uh, I don't know why the teaching is 1%. Uh, maybe this is for university teaching. I don't know. Uh, it's difficult to understand 1% uh, in teaching. So in the IT sector, you can see about 22%. So most of the businesses also in. These are all business values. Yes, it's all from business Right. So career oriented degree programs. Uh, so that is the aim uh, of the current trend, uh, not only in Sri Lanka, in, in many countries. Because students or graduates are worried about uh, their employment and career prospects. Universities are worried for funding, attracting students, ranking, competition, etc. etc. 
because universities cannot survive without having students in, in overseas, not like Sri Lanka. So if we don't have students, then we also lose our jobs and you know it's higher and higher. Right? So so universities are currently focused more attention on career-oriented degree programs. So now in Sri Lanka also there are many career-oriented degree programs started recently. And uh, for example, the faculty of Allied Health Sciences in, in Peradeniya and similar to other, other, other universities. And the other important aspect is that employers are looking for the ready-made graduates with the right knowledge, skills and competencies. So universities are based normally, you know, they provide you the right knowledge. But the skills and competencies are normally obtained during your work, working life. But nowadays, employers are looking for graduates with the right skills and competencies uh, you know, when you graduated. So that is the challenge the universities are facing all around the world. So the employment market also very competitive and challenging. So you have to prepare for, for the right employment and the right time. They have the right skills and competencies. So medical physics course are integral components in many, many academic and professional programs. For medical physicists, we have various uh, sub-specialities, radiation oncology, nuclear medicine, diagnostic radiology, radiation safety, etc. etc. Biomedical optics. For medical doctors, we have residency program for radiation oncologists nuclear medicine physician, radiologist, so physics is part of their curriculum. And we have radiation technologists, or we call radiographers in Sri Lanka, or we call radiation therapists in Australia, nuclear medicine technologists, diagnostic radiographer, and also physics is part of radiation engineers, radiochemists, and radiopharmacists. So medical physics is an integral component of all professional or academic programs. So there are many aspects of uh, uh, medical physics in various professions. Why medical physics? It is a job oriented degree program. Shortage of qualified and senior positions around the world. And there are many cancer incidents, high technology. So there are more opportunities for medical physics because cancer incident increases rapidly. Many new technologies are introduced in the, in the, in the hospitals or in the universities. There are high, very high technology. You, know, you can see bed spec camera to linear accelerator, tomography up to gamma knife, cyber knife. So, and also it's very highly paid profession in many countries. Example, US, Australia, Canada are even in Middle East. There are many opportunities available in Middle East, tax free money. Job security is very high, similar to any health jobs. As you know, in, 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 a, in a overseas, it's very difficult to secure a job. It's like a hire and fire, they hire you and after some time they fire you. If you don't perform well or if you don't have enough patients or if you don't have students. So opportunities are available for, available for career progression, funded further studies, training, funded continuous professional development, attending conferences, workshops. There are many benefits and privileges. And opportunities are available to be engaged in pure clinical aspects or professional aspects, teaching, research for both clinical and teaching if you have PhDs or postdoctoral training. And opportunities are available in the medical industries, radio pharmaceutical companies, manufacturing companies, Varian, Electra, right, so many manufacturers available, nuclear medicine based manufacturers. Opportunities are available for collaborations with conjoined or attempt or affiliate academic position in a university or an honorary medical physicist position in an academic cancer institute or university hospital. So you can have both. So you can feel both the life, academic life and, and your professional life. So that's, that's a good, so I, I'm actually uh, having both lives. So it is a bit tough, but it is very rewarding. And you can supervise students from the universities, students come to the hospital for clinical training or teaching. 
and also the other important aspect is under skill job category in for skill migration in many companies. So if you have a MSc in medical physics here, you can easily migrate to countries like Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. So, education and training uh, to be 
become a clinical medical physicist is very complex, at the same time very rewarding uh, process. The first stage, the university education in physics, engineering or mathematics, preferably it is at, should be at honors degree level. But now they say either physics or equivalent. So under equivalent, it is not well defined. So nowadays even medical doctors are even doing medical physics. When I was in Bangladesh a couple of weeks ago at the conference, the chairman of the Department of Medical Physics the Gono University in Dhaka is a medical doctor. She did an MBBS degree and then she did an MSc in medical physics and PhD in medical physics. Now she is an academic head of the Department of Medical Physics at the university. So now you can see the, where we are going now. So initially when medical physics started, the, the basic requirement should be physics honors or at least physics as a subject. So now it, it's can be anything now. Even engineers, even in Australia there are engineers who want to become as a medical physicist because of highly paid job and highly secured job. Engineering is not well paid overseas, it's only in Sri Lanka the engineering is one of the top uh, profession. Uh, so the first stage is, uh, I think if you have a physics degree then you can do well in medical physics. Otherwise you may find some difficulties. The second stage, graduate education leading to either MSc or PhD in medical physics. So the minimum requirement to enter the field is now medical physics MSc. And the important aspects of that is you have to follow all the medical physics four courses in the curriculum. So I will, I will discuss that in the next slide. Then the third stage is the physics residency training in a clinical environment and follows the professional certification. So now medical physics is uh, getting a bit tough. There are for many reasons. It's highly paid employment and the market is probably will get saturated in the next 10 or 15 years overseas because there are many people now move to medical physics and many universities started conducting medical physics program and as you can see now in Sri Lanka as well. You know, when I was in, uh, in New Zealand at the time, only one university for medical physics now two. In Australia, uh, last uh, five years now, almost six years, six universities. Before 2000, only two universities for medical physics. And similarly in other countries. So you can see now. So many, many graduates are uh, graduating from medical physics programs. So it's getting tough. Now in US, they introduce an, uh, a different program called Campbell Accredited Program. So they accredited only certain universities. So they only recruit graduates from those universities. So it's challenging and, and, and interesting future. So the first stage, the medical physicists should be educated primarily as physicists or biomedical engineers and be qualified and competent to apply many branches of physics to the clinical uh, situation. Second stage again, as I mentioned, masters or doctorate. So minimum is masters, but for example, if you want to do a PhD, you can complete all the core component of the postural components. Uh, there are six courses. So that is the compulsory. Then you can do your PhD straight away. You don't need to do an MSc. That means MSc two years, only one year postdoc and one year research. So you don't need to do a one year research. You can go straight away to PhD if you follow if you completed the postdoc one year component. Then you can either obtain a postgraduate diploma in science and medical physics, or uh, in UK you you can even obtain an MSc because UK MSc is one year. But uh, in Australia, it's now almost uh, two years MSc, one year post and one year research, one year research. And the doctoral programs is three to four years. So you can do research in any aspects of medical physics. You don't need to do traditional oncology or clinical medicine. So you can do any any aspects of uh, medical physics. But the core coursework, you must complete the core coursework component. I, I will introduce the core coursework component later. 
Okay, so this is the core course for components to become a medical physicist. Anatomy and physiology. This is the problem for physics graduates. So you have to uh, you know memorize all the anatomy and physiology. But others uh, physics find it easy because it more or less is physics, radiation physics, radiation oncology physics, nuclear medicine physics, diagnostic radiology physics, and radiation biology and radiation protection. So these are the six core modules you should or you must have before you enter into the profession. Again, it varies from university to university, but the professional accreditation bodies want to have this core component in the program, otherwise they don't accredit the program. But some universities slightly modify these courses based on their resources, requirements, etc. It is not easy because you have to coordinate with different departments. You see anatomy and physiology, you can't have people in the physics department. So, so it, it is a challenging task. Okay, third stage is mainly focused on specific clinical components. Now, now you can go into the specific, like if you want to go into radiation oncology, you can go to radiation oncology. Imaging, you can go into imaging. So the where you learn in depth knowledge and training and clinical competencies and skills. So now you, we have three major clinical areas, but most of the physicists work in radiation oncology medical physics. And there are about 10 to 15 percent in, in nuclear medicine and diagnostic radiology. Again, you should know mathematics, computing, there are many skills you need to survive in this field, especially in medical imaging. It's not only physics, but mixture of everything. And at the end of the training, the candidate has to sit the accreditation or certification exam uh, organized by the professional college uh, for the respective countries. Uh, we don't have a professional college in Sri Lanka, but in Sri Lanka, if you want to enter into the field, you should pass the Sri Lanka scientific service examination. But in the private hospitals, uh, you don't even have, have that requirement, so you, you can still work in the private hospital. So there is no mandatory requirement at the moment in anywhere in the world, but if we are certified, you have a high chance to enter the profession. But certification is not mandatory at the moment. You would the written exam for that special uh, particular specialty. For example, if it is radiation oncology, then you have to sit for the written exam again for that particular specialty. Then you have to pass a practical and oral exam. Again, it varies from country to country. And general oral exam, you have to sit for the general oral exam. And you have to have one peer-reviewed publication as a first author or two publications as a co-author in a peer-reviewed journal one conference presentation and also you have to submit the portfolios of your clinical training. It is a challenge. But again, if you complete all this, then you will have a bright future and bright career. But up to now, even if you don't complete these things, you can still find a job somewhere in the country, countryside or you know, but if you want to work in a major hospital or major cancer institute, then you have to satisfy all these requirements. The, non, the graduate degree in physics or medical physics is no longer adequate to work independently in a hospital. So you should have a clinical training as part of the education and training. And as before, there is a, you know, in the previous years, on the job training working under the supervision of a senior person is no longer adequate. So you have to follow the, the path, the training, the structured training program. Available uh, to be entered into, into the field. For example, those days, uh, physicists even who have a solid state background or a solid state MSc, they entered into the profession, you know, after having a postdoctoral training in medical physics or uh, been through the clinical training in the hospital. But now they are 
looking for graduates with MSc in medical physics or PhD in medical physics. But again, you can see uh, the different pathways. So this is the structure in, uh, mainly designed for US, but nowadays it is uh, common for most of the countries. So now you can see here, if you have a BS in physics, and then if you have an MS in medical physics, you can go into the directly into the clinical medical physics area. If you have an MS or PhD in physics or related field, then if you have then if you go to medical physics postdoctoral training, that means if you have a postdoctoral research in medical physics, and then you can enter in the clinical area. Right? So there are different pathways. So but again, uh, we don't know what will happen in few months, maybe after 10 years. But this is the current pathway. So anyone can enter into the field, even if you have a, a PhD in solid state physics. So there are opportunities available. And the other important aspect is continuing education. Because the field is rapidly evolving. New technology, new techniques. So you have to you know, know all the techniques if you want to survive in the field. So there are opportunities for attending at seminars, scientific meetings or training courses. And also, uh, you can uh, you know, work in different uh, environment. In, uh, for example, if you want to be in a radiation oncology, you also should know some imaging, because now imaging is integrate, integral part of radiation oncology. Because now you can see the linear accelerator has imaging uh, components also. So you have to have both. So you can't now uh, discriminate or differentiate the radiation oncology imaging separately. So it is more now an uh, integral uh, component. And accreditation, there are accreditation programs. First the accreditation of university graduate programs because the accreditation bodies establish a minimum level of uh, educational uh, component and the program should uh, follow that their requirements otherwise uh, the accreditation is uh, difficult right the challenges so the important challenge it is a multidisciplinary profession you have medical doctors you have physicists technologists nurses pharmacists radiation engineers many many professions the other confusion, the confusion of the roles and responsibilities of medical physicists because it overlaps with other professions. If you have many people, then always a problem. Inadequate collaboration and communication. Physicists are strong in physical sciences but weak in biological sciences. Right? Relatively small community, so each one, everyone knows others. So it should be very professional and ethical. You have to follow ethical as well as professional and profession is not yet widely known and recognized people doesn't know what is medical physics so that is still a, a, a challenge and you need multi skills and knowledge you should know anatomy physiology pathology computer engineering etc not only physics interpersonal skills troubleshooting skills communication skills, problem solving skills, and many more. Because we are going to survive in a multidisciplinary environment, which is not easy. Especially, you all know that how the programs are struggling here in allied health sciences. You can think that is one example. So, so continuing education, so you have to continue education until you retire because technology in medical physics is fast developing it is essential for all staff to have regular updates of new technology again imaging skill become important and also you will get support from your employer to do your further education and training and salaries and remuneration at MSc level you can see very high paid employment. Roughly you can see the average salary starting around 100,000. 
and you can go up to 130, 140 if you have a master's without certification. Master's with certification, you can go up to 160, $160,000 per year. This is mainly US and Australia have similar salary now. Uh, last uh, six or seven years, they introduced a similar salary scale. And this is at MSc level and this is at PhD level. If you have a PhD, you can go up to 160, non certified, and certified you can 180, 190,000 dollars per year. This is the average, but if you have other skills and competencies, you can get more. Even some people get 300,000 if you have you know, other skills and abilities. It's very highly paid after the medical consultant uh, in Australia and US. So you can think about uh, the difference. So these are the degree programs available in Australia and New Zealand. So these are the universities uh, conducting medical physics program, the University of Sydney. University of Wollongong, they have both masters, PhD and also they have a Bachelor of, uh, Bachelor of Science in medical physics program. RMIT University, we have medical physics program and as well as medical radiation science program, University of Adelaide and QUT, Queensland University of Technology and last year University of Western Australia also started medical physics. In New Zealand, University of Canterbury, where I am I did my PhD, um, they started uh, back in 2000 medical physics and University of Auckland recently started Bachelor of uh, Medical Imaging program, Bachelor of Science in Medical Imaging. So these are the only universities in Australasia, Australia and New Zealand. So if you want to do, want to go uh, follow MS medical physics, these are the only universities available in, in Australia, Australia and New Zealand. And these are the major universities in US and Canada. Mengele University in Canada is one of the oldest for medical physics. And University of Wisconsin and Medicine, you can see that is the, one of the best universities having medical physics uh, department. And John Cameron, the father of medical physics, is, uh, uh, is one of the pioneers in the department, was one of the pioneers. And uh, you probably all know that uh, Dr. Sundaralingam, who graduated from this department uh, back in uh, 1968, is uh, special. And he did PhD with John Cameron at University of Wisconsin Medicine in Thermoluminous and Dosimetry. Still, they have written a very nice book, still a very famous book in TLD, Thermoluminous and Dosimetry. <coughs> He is now retired uh, after working uh, at the Thomas Jeff and Jefferson University Hospital for many years. So University of Wisconsin is, is now the leading university uh, from my knowledge and understanding. So I have visited there. Uh, and Michael University in Canada. So they are the, uh, the best universities at the moment in medical physics. So they have a de department of medical physics in the university itself. So they have even more any accelerators installed in the university for research or even big scanner. So, but other universities, you can see they have collaboration. University of Alberta has collaborated with the first cancer institute. Manitoba has cancer there, Manitoba. I have visited last year Carlton University in Ottawa. They have a nice program. And they have a very nice faculty. And University of Toronto has Department of Biomedical Physics. The names are slightly different from university to university, some department in department of medical physics, biomedical physics, medical radiation physics, so a slight changes in the name, you know, you can see. For some department in biophysics, they conduct medical physics under biophysics. So these are the main universities in US and Canada. And these are the degree programs available in UK. Uh, university of Aberdeen uh, started a long time ago. And University of London uh, and also Sheffield, Surrey, they have a very uh, good program for a long time. And UCL, University College London also have a medical physics department, strong department. And this is a degree program in Sweden. I worked in Lund University, Lund University Malmo Hospital uh, back in 2003 for one year. They have a nice program. And Carolina Institute, one of the world uh, recognized uh, university, Carolina University Hospital. So they have a very strong program in Sweden. 
In Japan, they have a nice program, the only problem is language. But if you know Japanese language, so there are many scholarships available. You can go to Japan and do your postgraduate degree in one of the universities. In Sri Lanka, University of Peradhaniya started in 1996. We were fortunate to be the first batch of uh, students at Peradhaniya. And as you know, Columbus started uh, last year. And medical physics courses are introduced in undergraduate program in many universities. And BS radiotherapy, radiotherapy programs at Peradhaniya and other Latinx universities. So, so now you can see the development of medical physics in Sri Lanka. Uh, this is not uh, medical physics, but medical physics is part of this program. But only those two are the, for only for medical business. Conclusion. So medical physics is a challenging but highly rewarding profession. Right? And highly secured position because health jobs are highly secured. If you have a job, it's very rare to, to lose the job. But other jobs are not like that. And many career opportunities are available, clinical, academic, or both. You can work in industry, pharmaceutical companies, manufacturing companies. Freely move around the world. You can move anywhere in the world with your degree and experience. And proactive, advance, and enjoy the career and life. So that's all I want to talk. And I can answer any questions. Especially from students, because they may have any questions. Uh, I think uh, that if, uh, as per from what's a party, they have a collaboration with the Langa Hospital for new limits in the training. But uh, there are Selingo private hospitals, even they have no more club enough, uh, they find technology, but I don't know whether they have any collaboration. Sugar guys, maybe this is a star, not in the first line of their That is another problem, yes. Yes. <laughs> the other important aspect in all is medical physics is a separate discipline. Even though it is a multidisciplinary profession, but you have a separate department of physics in a cancer hospital or uh, you know cancer institute. But here in Sri Lanka, you are under medical doctors. So that is the major difficulty in Sri Lanka because doctors doesn't know about medical physics and what you are doing. And even for the if you want to purchase a new instrument, they are the people who you know recommend or sign the document. They don't know what, how the system works or, you know, they, so this is a major problem in Sri Lanka. But in overseas, that is the, we have the rights to tell uh, this is the equipment we need if we want to treat this kind of tumors. Right? So this is, has the responsibility. So, so that, that, that's a beauty if you work overseas in this field. But here in Sri Lanka it is difficult because uh, the, the system is like, the medical council is very strong and they are the people who control everything in this profession. So it's challenging. Radio pharmacists are those people who mostly work in implements in the department. They are the people who actually uh, you know, uh, prepare radio pharmaceuticals for injection, for example, if you want to scan, uh, if, for example, technetium with TBD, you know, injection, so they are able to uh, do, the, do the, this kind of jobs, radio pharmaceuticals. And there are radio pharmacies available in, in the major hospitals, so they work in the radio pharmacy department, uh, mainly for new treatments. No, they are actually uh, uh, preparing the doses, yes, based on the requirement uh, from the company. Uh, No, I'm 
that, that's a good question. I think uh, many people ask this question uh, many times. Uh, the radiation dose you get in a nuclear, uh, in a radiation oncology department is very, very minimal. It's like the pilots flying, you know, many times, they get the same radiation dose as similar to what you get as a radiation worker. And uh, because of the cosmic radiation, you know that. So, in the radiation oncology department, in a well shielded uh, bunker, you receive very minimal radiation. And again, medical physicists work uh, very minimal uh, in, the, in the radiation environment. Only those radiographers and radiation technologists work very often with the linear accelerator. You mostly do with the computer and uh, you know the only calibration and quality assurance checks. So physics doses are always low. Uh, and in nuclear medicine department, the doses are a bit higher because you handle radiation jobs uh, very closely. Uh, but still within the limits, there are international uh, guidelines. So you should maintain in the dosimeter. You have a personal dosimeter to measure the, the dose. And uh, so it is well protected. So any, any, anything, everything is risk. If you travel in the road, well, you, you can have an accident. So uh, I have a nice diagram. Uh, I can bring it today. Uh, the risk is very in the middle if you compare other risks in the life. So please be, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not an issue. But there, there are a self tension like that. Because, uh, but it's well protected. Even for female workers, there are many female workers in the, in the environment, like many radiation therapists and radiographers are females. But when they become pregnant, uh, they, are, they stop working with the, the radiation when they will work in the other environment for that time being. Uh, especially for the fetus, uh, the radiation dose level is very low. So it's all well protected. So no need to worry for radiation. It is similar to other risk in life, even by examples. So.
Yeah. Yeah, the pattern actually, uh, my PhD is not in radiation oncology. My PhD was in biomedical optics. Uh, so I did a fluorescence based uh, uh, investigation on bacterial spores, bacteria. And uh, while I was doing my research, uh, we found that the way to detect bacterial spores in a unique way using fluorescence. fluorescence, fluorescence. So then uh, the quantum efficiency was very high and we have made a bacterial spore fluorescence detector that is currently in the market. And US. Uh, so the work was funded by US Army and because at the time in New Zealand my professor, my supervisor was from the US. And uh, then we have sold our patent to the university and university collaborated with the uh, US companies now we already have the uh, device. Uh, but again the market is you know you have many many technologies so not that high at the moment, but still uh, we are maintaining. Uh, you can search in the Google and find out more information about the page. If you search my surname in the Google, you can find all the, the my website articles. So because my surname is very unique, no one else in the world is my user. Solar, 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 he was graduated from Meradhan. He is Sivanandan. Yes. I am also Sivanandan, but my surname is different. Yeah, yeah. He is Sivalingam Sivanandan, but I am Sivanandan. Yeah. He also graduated. Yeah, yeah. He has uh, an entrepreneur. He has, he has created his own company, yeah. so, but it is the invention. But he couldn't. <laughs> we don't have that, that, that kind of money. You know, you need to invest. It's a risk. The rate is a risk. So, you need hundred dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in this then. So he actually got all the funding and invested, but our research he sold our patent to some other company to make it. Uh, because it is a response, if it is no market then you need to sell your money. <laughs> Again it's challenging. But someone will take the challenge. So that is life. What is this view of cancer? I don't know. I was asking him. Uh, that is a good. Now there are very molecular level uh, treatment uh, available, gene therapy, and so many uh, therapies available. But no one, I don't know personally what is the best. But now even people they looking at gold nanoparticles uh, to treat cancer. Uh, but all under research uh, levels, so nothing. Only has any purpose here. Again. Uh, uh, very, very nice, very good question, but uh, I don't have an answer. <laughs> so, if you can have one chocolate, uh, so I got it uh, from Shreya's uh, Facebook Yes, I mean, 
India, right? So the India they develop an interesting program. I didn't mention about Indian programs, but they have a nice program in India as well.